I'm Lonnell Williams, and I am hanging out in bed today with a very hot, sexy Stanley E. Toy. What's up, baby? Not much. And I just appreciate you. <laughs> appreciate you, too. You're so good and coming up and <laughs> all this good stuff. Now, this year, you are the, um, the, the poster child, <laughs> of the face of Sizzle Miami. I am. What has the, the last year been like for you? Um, it's been very busy. It's kind of been kind of a little crazy. I've been doing a lot of stuff here and there um, with Sizzle. Um, also like on the side because I'm trying to do a couple of things on my own as well. So it's just been a really busy year. <laughs> so now that the weekend is here, what are your expectations? Whew, no sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots yeah. of work. Have a lot of people been recognizing you from the posters? Um, yeah, I was I was walking down the street and this guy he kept looking back <laughs> and then looking at the poster and looking back. <laughs> so. um, I saw on Facebook where you posted some pictures like mm -hmm. from back in the day when you were like, yeah. when I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> when, I was like, wow, but you were still hot. Oh, thank you. So I was like, okay. <laughs> thank you. I was like 2019, something like that. So, what prompted you to have um, these people <laughs> anymore to become so. I just, <laughs> I, I just, I hated, I hated being called, like, so people always refer to me as like tall, skinny, Stanley. <laughs> and I just didn't like that. And I just, I always wanted to be bigger and was always wanted to be muscular, even when I was like seven. I just always knew that I wanted to be muscular. And I just started working out, just dedicated. Put in the work, and I guess. <laughs> How long did it take for you to begin noticing results? Um, yeah, like a month. Usually in a month, you can notice some kind of results. Um, I started actually putting weight on maybe like six months. Okay. Yeah. And then when did people around you start noticing? Because I know there was had to be a, a, a <laughs> time when people started responding to you differently. Yeah. Um, um almost immediately, people started saying like, "Are oh, you working out?" or like, "Are oh, you gaining weight?" or at first, people started saying you're getting fat. <laughs> so, but then, like, yeah, now it's like people that like, cause I, I moved from Baltimore to New York, so like, when I see people in Baltimore I haven't seen like for a while, they're like, oh my god, you're big as hell. Not like to me, I still look the same. I still feel the same. Tell me about um, your modeling, like how you got into that. Um, I got into modeling probably. Um, I've been doing it for about four years. I was in Baltimore, and, and you know, Baltimore is like really big on like the college fashion shows. Right. Like, the whole fashion show thing, it's a little different than it actually is in the fashion world, but that's what interest got my interest, sparked my interest in it, and um, then I, I wanted to do it professionally, so I moved to New York. I actually moved to New York to go to film school for script, uh, screen acting, uh, screenwriting, <laughs> but um, it didn't really work out the way I planned, so then I just started modeling, and it's been going pretty well. Been going pretty well, wow. So what, what advice would you give to someone who was interested um, if you're interested in modeling, you should definitely do the research. Um, you need to know your market, know exactly what that entails. Um, just find out what works for you, and you'll be on your way. Stay dedicated, believe in yourself. Are you single? <laughs> I am single. <laughs> now how is someone as physically stunning as you? I mean, you must be crazy then. I, I might be not. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually um, when I, like, if, I'm, if someone's interested in me or whatever like that, they'll say like, they, they don't believe I'm single and I think that's probably the problem <laughs> that people assume I'm seeing someone or I'm dating someone. I mean, I am kind of seeing mm -hmm. someone. See, mess, right there. <laughs> I'm kinda. dating someone, but um, I guess I'm single. I guess I'm single, kind of. See, that, that's why I'm, I'm <laughs> single. <laughs> We're not together yet, but I'm single. So but there's an interest, maybe. There's an interest. Yeah, okay. Now, you came out when you were 16 to your family and to everyone. I did <laughs> in high school. I did. So tell us about that process and how you how you found the courage to do it, especially at such a young age. Um, me and my mother are really like we're very close, and like I really don't keep secrets from her. So I just decided that it was time to tell her. <laughs> I actually wrote a note. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a note. I thought I was by, and I left it and I gave it to her, and I went to my room. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here's some reading for you, mom. And so. <laughs> What happened after that? Um, she called me down, we talked about it, we cried, we got over it, and she's very supportive now. So you are bi? Yes. <laughs> well, I, and, I, and I ask that because a lot of people, a lot of times the bisexual men and women, well more so with the men, mm -hmm. the gays believe you're gay, the straight women believe that you're gay, right. it's like you can't be kind of Kind of both. Both. I, I'm more so, I, I like this, which is like when people ask me, I'll just say I'm gay. 
because it's, it's too complicated when you get into all the, you know. So, but yeah, there's still interesting women that I plan. I think I'm gonna have children, so. <laughs> plan okay. on having it with a woman the normal way. <laughs> so. oh, okay, I'm fertile. <laughs> How important is sex in a long-term relationship? Sex in a long-term relationship is you very important. So beautiful. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> so distracted. Well, so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so sex is very important in a relationship. Because, um, I mean, if you're not sexually satisfied, you know, you're going to want to step out or do something else. And I feel like that's probably a problem with most relationships. People entertain something that they're not, they're not completely happy in and they, then they end up stepping out of something like that, so. But is, is monogamy, is that really possible and feasible? Yes. And can, can someone, can one person really be all that for your sexual? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. You don't believe me? Oh, I, I got my freak, baby. I can, I, I can, I can, I can, I can learn, I can do, but I, yeah, let me, let me, I believe it's possible. What's the maximum age difference that you would date? 10 plus um, minus 10? I don't discriminate by age. I don't really discriminate by much, believe it or not. Um, age to me isn't, I, I can't really date anyone younger than me. <laughs> That's the only thing I kind of have a problem with, but as far as older, I don't really have a cut off. Okay. So you said you, you don't discriminate against, against much. Could you date someone who was obese? Yeah, it depends on how obese. <laughs> yeah, I actually like thicker, thick guys. Get out of my <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a couple. Di I'm, I'm a couple different types, but I do kind of like thick guys, like me. <laughs> well, let me go get some um, something to eat. You know, just, I'm just be some with you. But um, yeah, because I, I always wonder because people. It always sounds nice to say, well, no, I don't discriminate. But then we have this whole no fats, no fins. It's like the heavier mm -hmm. kids get so much discrimination. Um, True. Just like the fem kid, I mean, it's, it's, it, there's always something, but I always wonder if people are going to be honest about that and say that they would, if they would date someone. But someone obviously was very obese. That's probably more of a health condition that, yeah, I may not be yeah, necessarily no. attracted to that. So that was honest. Yeah. So Stanley's honest, sexy, and <laughs> intelligent. We love when that happens. <laughs> what do you think about um, Don Lemon coming out? Um. I wasn't surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I thought it was very courageous. I mean, of course, people was. in the community don't know, but uh, but when you are like the lead anchor on CNN, yeah. you know, so that that was that was big for the community that he felt that it was time enough. To I think like a lot of a lot more people that are in like high positions like that, and people see you. I think they some of them should like step out. It'll help. It'd be a lot easier for younger gay kids who are like in school and. You know, if there if there are leaders out there who are gay and they're saying that they're gay and they're standing up for it, it'll help more people have courage to know go on with their day to day lives. So. What's the longest you've ever gone without having sex? Um, the longest I've ever gone without having sex, um, definitely a month, maybe a couple months. A couple of months. Maybe a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you start dating someone. Mm -hmm. that you're interested in, you really want to take it to the next level of mm -hmm. possibly being a long-term uh, relationship. How long should you wait before you have sex? Um, that's a good question. It depends on, it just depends on the situation because I've been in situations where like, usually when you have sex with someone too quickly, you kind of get over it for some it's reason. Kind of yeah, just, yeah just thank you. But <laughs> it's like having lunch. See ya. True, but there's been certain instances where that's happened and, you know, they've, you know, been around and it worked out, but it just depends on the situation. So, but if you can wait it out, I definitely feel like you should wait it out. But you don't know how long that is. No. I guess you gotta kind of feel that out. At least out. a day. No. <laughs> Tonight at the club, yes. Hit me up on BGC. Yeah, wait until tomorrow. Craziness. <laughs> Now, have you ever dated like online or on any of those chat groups, um, like the Adam for Adams? And well, if so, if anyone sees me on like a picture of me on BGC or Adam for Adam or anything like that, it's not me. Okay, <laughs> so I have though. I have, I'm sure every most everybody has been on one of those websites, but this was like in my adolescent years, you know, <laughs> when you first introduced. But yeah. no, I don't have any. <laughs> I don't do any of that. <laughs> In your adolescent years or later, did you have you ever been to like a sex party or a bathhouse? I've never been to a bathhouse or a sex party. Um, 
I probably can't go now. No. <laughs> right. They'll be like, oh. So. Um, Not that I know what goes yeah. on in those places. I mean, <laughs> we've got to get, I think we've got to evolve from just uh, all the sexual or the hyper, those hyper masculine yeah. images and, the, and just focusing on the sex and the physical and really try to get to something a little deeper and more relevant. If we're going to sustain some type of uh, longevity in our relationship, in yeah. our personal relationships. A person cheats, if your partner cheats, mm -hmm. how many times can they cheat before you would leave them? Um, a lot of people lie and say once, but I've been in situations where it's happened a couple times. Yeah. Somebody cheat on somebody as fine as you? Yeah. Oh, were you the cheater? <laughs> no, they cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> they cheated on me, so, yeah. Um, I'll kill them people. dead before I let them cheat on me. <laughs> I mean, I, I've all, I mean, I'm not going to say I've never cheated on anyone I've dated, because I have. But, um, yeah, they, um... And isn't it so easy now with technology and the way that the phones to and, cheat on people? And and, what, and then what constitutes cheating? I mean, if you've got if you're flirting with somebody on Grinder, the application that I heard the kids talk about, or Jack. Right, he's talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it again, it depends on the couple because some people have different boundaries. Right. Um, you know, I am, I'm a cancer, <laughs> so what's <laughs> mine, it's mine. No, um, like, flirting, uh, I, I just, I don't believe in anyone participating in anything that could lead to infidelity, so if you feel like it's wrong, you gotta hide it, it's not, you it's should not. be doing it. Yeah. So then, if you had, um, met somebody, and said you met them and they had a, a profile on one of those sites, mm -hmm. and you guys started getting serious, would you would you want them or require them to yeah. delete that profile? <laughs> they couldn't yeah, I probably would talk to somebody. <laughs> so you, but, uh, you may not talk to someone. That's like, that's like a, you know, like a, unfortunately, um, there are stereotypes, and <laughs> people have certain... But let me tell you, Facebook I, can be just as bad because I've got some folks sending me some stuff on Facebook that, that should. That's you know. very true, but I mean that, mm. and then it and then it depends on how many times, how often they're on there, and you know stuff like that. So right. you know, it'll definitely make you feel a certain way about someone. So if you're on a date and your date is tweeting or texting, I feel like if you're at a dinner or at a movie or something like that, you should be texting anyway. <laughs> Unless, uh, unless you're very, very busy, like me, no. <laughs> and you right, you're always emails coming business. in or something, mm -hmm. and you conduct your business, then, you know, every now and then, but all the time, you should be, like, texting. Okay. okay. What do you think of images of black men in the media, of gay black men in the media today? I feel like, um, I still feel like people look at gay black men negatively. Even like in the modeling industry, a lot of people, like a lot of people I know in the industry, they say like, "Oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, or you're doing this. Like, you sure you want to do that, or you're not gonna be able to do this if you're doing that." It's just, and I'm again, I'm the kind of person who I believe it was gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Like, you know, I don't, I don't believe that you can't do one thing to do another thing. And so far, I've been okay, you know, because I, because I am, I, I am a gay black man, and why can't I represent gay black men or? you know, support them in the event or, you know, do HIV awareness or something like that because, oh, someone might not hire me for a gig in the straight world, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, just, I, don't, I don't feel like that's when right. When it's all a bunch of closed cases anyway. Right. In, so, in many cases. So how do you balance your spirituality and your sexuality? Um, I feel like they're separate. <laughs> they're, they're two different things. I... A lot of... Because I'm, I'm, spir I'm spiritual, I'm into my religion, but I'm not, like, most of those... I don't know, I don't know, I hate talking about religion because I don't agree with the way some of those, most of the people who preach this and preach that, preach that are the main ones that are just like doing what they're saying. Doing the worst, do, right? Oh, right, doing the worst of the worst, Eddie Long. Oops, no shit, allegedly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of that, and, I, and, I, and that's one of the reasons I ask, because, uh, because so many of us, uh, gay mm -hmm. and lesbian children, are just victimized by that and we're just like we know it's, it's a huge internal process and it's bullshit basically yeah i have a lot of pastor friends on facebook that requested me right. let's mm. just say that so. <laughs> come lay hands on me be papa <laughs> just a mess what's next for you uh what's next for me i don't know it's a secret <laughs> mm. Um, I got a couple things going on right now. It it really is a secret. That's, that's <laughs> Not a secret, but I don't want to. You don't want to talk, right? It's only going to jinx stuff early. until you until yeah. you actually um, put it out there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for 
and nah, this has been a fantasy of mine for a while. <laughs> for a while? I was like, mm. Not that I had no, no man dingo fantasy and I wasn't objectifying <laughs> it. You had a beautiful spirit in the heart and your oh, light just shined. And I knew that the bed would be the place for us. For us. So, well, <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Even though I'm not thick enough. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Continue success. Thank you. And I appreciate your support and love when I reached out to you. Of course. For Pillow Talk and for the support of Real WTV. Well, I want to thank you all for tuning in to Pillow Talk. <laughs> I'm Lonnell Williams. Thank you again, Stan. We need to Always. Stand in your light. <laughs>